So in our lesson today, Foundations of Math 20, we are starting chapter 5. And chapter 5, if you look in your textbook, there's 5.1. But if you look uh, at page 207 in your textbook, um, this chapter is all about something called statistical reasoning. So uh, there is an area of math called statistics. And if you're a fortunate person like I was, you will take some stats classes in university, maybe. Uh, if you're going to be a math teacher, which I'm sure all of you want to be a math teacher here. But uh, anyway, statistics is something that you will run into many times between now and your deathbed, okay? Uh, you see statistics all the time now. You read about it in the, uh, you know, uh, in the news. You, you see statistics. You hear statistics everywhere. So understanding how statistics work, um, and again, if we go back to some of these definitions, understanding what these things mean, um, you will notice them more and more in your everyday life. Um, you will see histograms. You will hear about the mean temperature. Um, there will be lots of discussion about outliers, okay? Uh, you know, data points that really mess up the average, right? Because it's an extreme that is not indicative of, you know, the uh, data as a whole. So all this kind of stuff is stuff that you might study in depth um, if you're fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how you see that. Uh, but you will experience this stuff a lot in your real life. So let's take a look at this uh, first exercise here. Explore the math. This section is pretty brief, okay? Um, and again, the very first sections of most of these chapters are pretty brief. You're coming off a test. Um, it's just to kind of get you started. There's, there's some introduction that the teacher does for the chapter. So a lot of these first sections, point ones, are pretty short. This one is. Um, we are going to take the time to explore the math. I'm going to go through this exercise with you. I'm going to ask you to do it with a partner sort of thing to explore this situation. So let's read it. It says, explore the math. Paulo needs a new battery for his car. He's trying to decide between two different brands. Both brands are the same price. He is able to obtain some data for the lifespan in years of 30 different batteries of each brand as shown. So here's a car battery, looks pretty typical there. And here's the data that he was able to find. So brand X, the first type of battery, uh, he's got listed here about, what's that, three, six, uh, it's about 30, uh, oh yeah, it says there, 30 years of lifespan. So this is how many years each particular battery lasted. So here's brand X and here's brand Y. And so he's going to take a look at this, and he's going to try and make a decision on which battery would be best to buy. So what I want you guys to look into are uh, what sort of things should he consider, and I want you to consider those things, and I want you to come up with a, um, a suggestion for, for Paolo here. Now the reflecting part gives you some indication of what you should be thinking about, or some tips. And it says this, describe how the data in each set is distributed. Describe any similarities or differences between the two sets of data. B says, explain why the mean and median do not fully describe the difference between these two brands of batteries. So as you recall, the mean is the average, the median is the middle number. So why are those maybe not enough? What other things should you consider? Like, it says, consider the range. Okay, so the range would be the smallest number and the difference between that and the largest number. So you look at where's the battery that had the you know, smallest uh, or the fewest years, where is it, 3.1 here? Is there something under 3.1? Okay, so 3.1 would be the uh, lowest term and what's the battery that lasted the most here? Uh, there's an 8.2 right here. Okay, is that the largest number? Looks like for So the difference between those two numbers should be considered. What's the uh, what's the smallest number we see over here? Uh, is there any threes? 4.5? Is there anything less than 4.5 that you see there? Okay, 4.5. And what's the largest number that we see here? 6.8. 7? There's a 7 there. Okay, so right away, that's okay, no, that's all right. Thanks for, thanks for offering that. So right away you see that the range of lifespans over 30 trials here, the range is much smaller for brand Y than brand X, okay? Now, if you brought brand X, you could get one of those batteries that lasts you over eight years. According to this data, you'd never get a battery that lasts you over eight years with this one. But, 
what does the range tell you about the, the quality of the battery? And so this is what I want you to think about. Dispersion, okay? So consider the range was one measure of dispersion. You, you uh, define dispersion, okay? It's basically how the data is spread out. Is that consistent? If we have two classes that have the exact same average in the class, okay? So we have two math classes. The average is 82% in the class. Awesome. Both classes are doing great, right? Both classes are very similar. Both classes are amazing. And then we find out that one class has a range from 80 to 84. And the other class has a range of marks from 30 to 100. Now those are two very different classes, right? So that tells us a little bit about the class. They aren't identical, right? What about the numbers of each and so on? So I want you to think about that. Take three minutes maybe with a partner if you want. Um, just talk quietly though if you need to. But I want you to reflect on this. Come up with a suggestion for Paolo. I do want you to talk about mean, median, maybe the mode as well. I also want you to talk about range, which would give us some clues about dispersion. And go through this uh, reflecting piece, okay? So here you go. Here is your data in your textbook. I'll just show you these reflecting questions as well. So if you're doing this outside of the classroom, you can just kind of pause these things. I guess it's right here. Okay, so what we've done is we've uh, taken a look at the mean. That's the average lifespan for both. We've taken a look at the median, which is the middle number for both. The mode, which is the number that appears most often. Okay, these are three measures of central tendency. Each of them are, are good in certain, certain ways. And the range, we found here quite a difference in the range. All right. So your job was to come up with a recommendation for Paolo. So which battery should he buy and why? Let's just quickly do a, a couple suggestions here. Which battery should he buy and why? Brand X, Y. <laughs> okay, brand X because the range is, is higher. Okay. And that's a good thing that the range is higher. It means that there's more batteries that last a, 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 a very small amount of time and batteries that last a very long amount of time. So it's this range, a higher number, would probably mean it's a little more inconsistent, is what that means. A lower range would probably mean that over the same number of batteries, that would be more consistent. Okay. So if you said brand Y because of the range, that would be fine. You would explain yourselves that I'm looking for a battery that's a little bit more consistent. Even though the average is smaller, it's smaller by, I mean, you know, two one hundredths of a year, which means nothing. So we've got literally the same average, but more consistency. So if you said that, that's great. And if you also said that the mode, that is the most probable lifespan out of this data would be higher for brand Y. Okay, I'm putting words in your mouth here now, but just to speed this up. Were there, were there any other suggestions for different reasons? Not necessarily that it's right or wrong, but was there anything else you considered at all? No, not really? Okay. So if you looked at range, great. If you looked at the mean being the same, if you looked at the mode being higher for Y, then brand Y would probably be the one that you would suggest. Okay, let's go back to the textbook here and we'll look at um, the summary. Um, oh, actually I should just note this one thing. I don't know how many of you looked at D. Okay, If we had a battery in brand Y that was defective and its lifespan was 0.5 years okay, instead of 5.9, would this affect your advice to Paolo or not? Anybody think about that reflection question there? Wouldn't affect it. Why? Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? Yep. Um, I would, I would less, like I would uh, recommend the other brand because there's a, there's a small chance that it could last five years. Okay. So you, if you saw this on the list, that's a big alarm bell for you. Hey, so you say I'd, I'd suggest the other one. There. Yeah. Like okay. One. Oh. Okay. So out of 30, even one out of 30, that's actually a pretty high percentage when you're talking about buying a battery that they're making millions of. That, uh, yeah, if this happened, there might, that might signify a problem. Okay? Very good. I agree with that. Anybody else have a, a differing opinion? Or what were you going to say? I'd say any company worth its name would have warranty on a battery. 
Okay, so you would say that shouldn't affect things because there should be warranty after half a year. Okay, very good, yeah. Any, anything else? Well, yep. 30 is still a relatively small size yep. uh, for an example. So if you have a company, uh, I mean, mistakes are going to happen. Mm -hmm. So if it just by, happen, by a chance happened that one of those was bad, okay. the likelihood is it's not actually that high of a percentage. Okay, so this wouldn't bother you because it, it could be just one defective, there's warranty, it's not that bad. Okay, um, the other concept here that you might want to consider th is that this really is, would probably be considered an outlier, right? So you, you know what an outlier means? That's a data point that is quite a ways off all of the other means of central tendency and it's kind of a one-off, it's something that probably you, know, you wouldn't consider, right? Um, so there would be argument for and against this for sure. Okay, good. Uh, that's the thinking I'm looking for. So the key idea is me measures of central tendency, we discussed mean, median, mode, are not always sufficient to represent or compare sets of data. So they are important, but there are other factors as, as we've talked about. You can draw inferences from, you infer, okay, you can draw conclusions here from numerical data by examining how the data is distributed about the mean or the median. So this whole idea of distribution is something that you need to consider as well and making your judgments. So to compare sets of data, the data must be organized in a systematic way. Uh, the median and the mode, um, you should organize the data from smallest to greatest. So you can see the middle number. And it's easier if you're doing it that way, you can see the mode because they will be listed right beside each other and it's easier to see. So we, I didn't show that on the screen, but that is something that you should do for your data points to make sure you get this stuff right. When analyzing two sets of data, it's important to look at both similarities and differences in the data. So there's your 5.1, an introduction to exploring differences in data. Um, I am going to get you to do question number one and number three for your assignment. So here is, here's number one, the data for number one. Yeah. Questions that go along with number one. You may want to uh, do two as well as it relates to kind of a school uh, situation. And here's the data for number three. Yeah, number two would be optional, but uh, focus on number one and three, please.